large live skipjack. That's a, not a catfish. That That's would a be striper. a striper. <laughs> well. <laughs> Still straight up pouring. This may be a decent fish, guys. Yeah. Well, what's up, y'all? We are back at it again, back for vengeance at Watts Bar Dam. And hopefully, we don't have to fight the Osprey again today. Got my buddy Ryan in town. You guys haven't seen him before. He's one of the original fish bros. He's in medical school right now, about to be a doctor. So uh, it's nerds gone fishing today instead of girls gone wild. But we're going to get some big old stripers and catfish. So stay tuned for some real dumb stuff because that always happens when Ryan and I go. <laughs> we'll see you. Ryan is whacking us some bait. So this entire video is going to be done from our phones. So... Yes. So remember when I said some dumb stuff would happen? It yeah, hath already, already happened. Like 30 seconds on the water. I'm sitting there trying to put it in the mount up front and it just comes undone and goes straight in the water. Bloop. Gone. Bloop. Bloop. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. $400. Because yeah. I had whatever. The price. The river hath exacted its toll, but we are catching skipjack for bait and we are going to have a good time nonetheless and catch some daggum fish in spite of losing the camera. So, if the camera work is less than excellent today, you guys know why. But, I keep it real on the channel and I drop my camera in the water because I'm an idiot. <laughs> All right guys, so we are going to try to do some filming now with just the phone. So, Ryan here is gonna balloon out some big old skipjack some live bait yeah, about the size of a bass they catch in a tournament and be happy and we're gonna try to catch a giant striped bass and then maybe catfish later we'll see we brought all the catfish rods we got anchors with us we're just gonna play it by ear especially since the uh camera is now somewhere over there on the bottom rest in pepperoni <laughs> Mr. Ryan here has already got a big live skipjack out. I'm going to talk about tackle here for a second. You guys have seen all these type of rods before. These are musky rods that we use for striper and catfish a lot. But basically, they're long and pretty stiff, so you can set the hook from a distance, especially when you're ballooning baits. This is an, like an 8-foot, I don't know. It's a Mojo Musk, 8-foot-6, heavy power. And what that allows you to do is when the skipjack are way out there on a balloon a long distance away, you can set the hook on them. And so what I've got that rigged up on is a Daiwa Saltese. Uh, there you can see the model right there. It's got 65 pound suffix 832 braid. I like braid because it's more sensitive and there's no stretch in it so you can set the hook real well. And then we've got a 50 pound fluorocarbon leader right there, about four or five feet of it leading down to a 9 knot Gamakatsu Octopus J-Hook. We're just running singles today because I want the skipjack to swim around and be pretty active because the water temps have gotten higher and striper can generally be more aggressive when they're like that. So when you hook them with just a single hook over the uh, double hook rig, they will swim around far, 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 far more. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, and we're going to get them. I've got a little weight up at the top just so the skips will stay down a little bit. That's maybe a quarter ounce little egg weight up there above my uni to uni knot with a a uh, a little bead to cushion it and this will just keep the baits down in the water column a little bit because striper they'll come up and hit them on the surface a lot but sometimes it's really hard for them to actually eat the skipjack on the surface so we want to try to keep them down in the water column so they can eat them as much as we can sometimes you get some awesome topwater eats but that's not always Oops, oh, Orange balloon, Cut yellow. I have been attacked by Osprey 15 times and I actually got one to the boat and they're only hitting oh, my crap. Yep, you're looking right one, yep, the orange one. <laughs> Mine is obviously the orange balloon. Free all you can eat.
his mate. Leave mine alone. Yes, do it. Go, Barnet. Go. Get the orange. The orange balloon. <laughs> yep, he's, he's circling around. He's having trouble with the wind. Now he's like coming in for an attack run. He's coming. He's coming. Circling back. Now wait, he's gone. Good. The orange balloon is what you want. There's baked free food. Why do you sound like you're from the Crusades? I don't know. Does it matter? <laughs> Indubitably, the orange balloon is what you want. I'm gonna lose my mind. So when you are boil fishing or running up to the turbines and floating back, turbines, whatever, there was no redneck, it came out. Um, you hook your baits a whole lot differently. You're gonna to wanna to hit hook them in the nose like this because you're gonna be dragging this bait along the bottom basically. And if you hook them in the back, it's just gonna rip off. The nose is super stably hooked. And if you're using gizzard shad or thread fins, same way, just smaller tackle. I'm only trying to catch big fish. Look, he pulled his hook off. But that's the basic gist of it. You get the idea. All right, so you're not gonna to wanna to come and get right on top of the boil, at least not in my boat, I'm not doing that. We're just gonna get a little bit below it and I'm gonna put the nose directly up where it's pointing or pushing the current backwards. And then we're gonna flick the boat in neutral. We're gonna start floating back a little bit. And then Ryan's gonna throw that bait out. You gotta wait until you start floating back though. Go ahead. And then he's just gonna feed it some line out there. Um, all right, he's starting to swim. And then we're just going to free drift back out here in the current. We're going to try to keep the bait. If we can let them swim around and get closer to the bottom, that's good. Uh, but that's what we're going for. And when a striper hits it, it's just dunk, especially in this no, heavy it's like flow. The bottom. It's like rock. Yeah, that's how hard that's they thump hard. it. It's pretty cool. I'm going to get a bait out myself, and we will be back with you when uh, we get a fish on. We just free drifting. Obviously the current's gotta be going to do this. Normally the more generators the better, you get more area you can drift and these places can get really crowded. But again, this is, if you wanna start catching stripers, this is the easiest way to start doing it. Get you some gizzard chat or whatever. You don't have to use skipjack if you're not good at catching them yet or can't keep them alive. And then you come up here and do this. Well, looky here, looky here, the trolling motor. The trolling motor remote messed up too. It has a fatal error code apparently. So now we have to just drift. Ugh. I believe uh, Ryan has a big catfish hook. So walk to the back to let him get around that motor. This catfish ate a large live skipjack. That's a, not a catfish. That That's would a be striper. a striper. <laughs> well. That's a good one. He ain't really fighting like a striper though. Oh, it's a good one. Fat guy. There you go, Ryan. Bring him up here to me. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Get that striper. Oh, he's tearing that line, boy. Oh, baby. Look at that fish. Look at that rod bend. Look at that rod bend. Oh, man, he's gonna get in my line. Oh, he is in my line. Not good. <laughs> okay, I am sorry I missed the the landing of that, but he it tangled was, up in my skipjack. Like, I think there's a fish on there. Whoop! There's a fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh baby, that's a good one too. Man, broke controlling motor remote. Dropped my four hundred something dollars worth fish of camera gear. It's <laughs> We got him. Help me out here. Pull it in. Oh, baby. There we go. There's you, toady. That's a big one. There's a little toady. <laughs> that might be close to my PB as far as weight. That's a fat fish. Okay, after a morning of Murphy's Law, Brian here has 
caught him a big old toady. Look at that belly. And we fish in the boils. I'm going to do a little how-to on that and how to do it safely here in a little bit. But we have got a fish in the boat to boost morale after the morning we've had. Morale boosted. <laughs> All right, now we're going to release her. You'll probably have to sit there and swish her around. Look at that big old thick back on that fish. I'm going to hold my phone real tight here. There we go, baby. That was fun, wasn't it? Tell us what happened, what you felt, because I didn't have that portion on camera when it first hit. So, uh, I was basically giving it as much line as possible as it was... Um, the live skipjack. Yeah, it was a barely a live one. <laughs> yeah. It was floating right near the bottom, and I felt a couple of dinks, and I thought, did I, did I hit the bottom? And I was like, I think I felt something. Mark's like, oh, it's probably the bottom. <laughs> like, All right. And then I waited, and I was like, no, it's... It's moving. It's not going anywhere. It's moving now. <laughs> so I was like, All right. He said, reel down, set the hook, and whammo. There she was. Fish on. Now, you're able to safely release these fish in uh, oh, uh, the on. dams because there is stable, cool water for them. Um, if you catch a lot of these fish on the main lakes in the summer, um, the water temps are really high and it's hard for them to survive. But down here, the water's like 70 degrees most of the year, below all the dams, wherever you fish, because they're sucking water from the deepest portion of the main lake above it. So they're generally cooler down here below them. But uh, safe release there. And uh, we're going to try to get a couple more, have some fun. We'll get them. Well, guys, Mother Nature is rearing her ugly head at us. And uh, we got to get out of here. It's like freaking two and three foot rollers. This happens when the current is going that way and wind goes that way. And then they just make a, a multiplying effect and it just gets brutal. So, yeah, the bait tank went all the way back. The trolling motor battery came out of the bottom. We're just having a heck of a day. But we keeping it real. Much crap going on. Well, we got it on the day. But that was a mess. So we're gonna go eat some lunch and find somewhere not as nasty because I ain't getting out in that little boat. That's not safe. So we're gonna go, we're gonna try to go catfish, I guess, somewhere uh, on the main lake or up in a river that's sheltered from the wind because this ain't this ain't kicking it. It's not, not worth being out here. All right, so we uh, called it quits on striper fishing below the dam there and we have come up to another river here uh, up above it. We're on Watts Bar Lake now, back in the background there, and then we are going to do some catfishing, and we're just going to be cut baiting right now. Actually, we have some live skipjack left, so we may be able to throw those out, so we'll see. But what we're fishing here, the type of structure is an island right here with two portions of the channel that meet right there, and we're positioned right at the tip of it, so I'm just going to fan cast some lines all the way around this. Um, hopefully maybe pick up some cat, catfish, striper, you never know. Um, but this is a good transitory area. They've got to come up this way up the main channel and we're positioned right at the tip of it where they're either going to split that way or that way, or if they're going to get active, they'll move up on the tip of it right here. And we're going to put baits all down here around it. Okay. So we're going to do cut bait and live bait. We've got a couple of live skipjack left. Carolina rig, eight ounces of weight. This is a little bit of a longer leader line than I normally will use just to let this guy swim around on the bottom. And we're gonna see if we can pick up a big giant flathead catfish. Gonna throw this guy out there. Let him get down to business. Put him down in the danger zone. All right, he is on the bottom. Now we put them in the rod holder and wait. That's good. This is a double hook rig bait, and what we're gonna do is put a large piece of skipjack on that, and I will show you how to do that. Here's one of these smaller guys. We can actually about use this guy whole. What I'm gonna do is take the knife and fillet down until I hit the backbone, and then I'm gonna turn the knife like I'm cutting a fillet off of a fish all the way down and cut right there. And what that does, that exposes this backbone here and it allows it to bleed. And that's how you get your scent trail for the catfish. And then when you're hooking it, take the hook right here, bottom jaw, 
out one of the nostrils. That's the top hook that's uh, closest to the sinker itself. And then the bottom hook right here, we're gonna take it and run it through the backbone pretty close to the bottom end. Oh, I got tangled up there. Pretty close to the bottom end, just like that. And we're gonna put it like that. So now it lays like that. And then if they short strike it, they're gonna get this back hook. And then you just throw her out there. It's so windy right now that there's no way we can drift or anything. It's just gonna be a mess. So we have got us anchored up in some current on the back end of this island. And we're gonna target big flatheads and maybe a striper. Cats here too, but it's more likely going to be flatheads. Yeah, here's there's a decent sized chunk piece right there, like three finger widths apart. And this just goes on a, a single hook rig. We're going to hook it. Through the backbone right there, out the top. Make sure the hook's exposed and get these scales off the tip or you are gonna have heartbreak. No scales. So we've got a down line down right there three cut bait rods thrown out the back right there off the end of the point. A down rod right there, a cut bait rod out that way because I don't have my T-bar fixed yet. And then I sent a planer board out with one of the live skips way out there in the channel because we saw stripers busting on the top. So there's a live skip jack out there just swimming about 30 feet behind that, 20 feet, something like that. Hopefully it just gets creamed out there. But we baiting and waiting. Storm's rolling through. We ain't really gonna move around anywhere uh, because it took too long to get set up here because of the wind and everything. So we uh, we posting up. It's pouring down rain, but the first rod right there is getting tapped. Come on, just give me a dink. Come on, baby. Come on. Just give me a dink. Oh, baby. Give me a dink, baby. One little dink. I'll take it. No complaints here. My stomach's rolling from that Taco Bell, boy. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> hey, I was like, it was in the suggestion. Hey, I was like, yeah, let me give you a range of 10 restaurants. And Ryan picks Taco Bell out of all of them. Well, we're gonna come out here and sit on the boat for like five hours. I did it on purpose. Oh, there it goes. Dink. Yeah, I'm playing with it. Dink. Come on, just take it. Just dinky. fold it over, bud. Dink it. Okay, well, now, now it is just pouring rain. Just, uh, yeah. just soak. And you know what? Lots of YouTube channels and most of it's shows on TV and stuff like that not gonna show this but this 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 is a real real portion of chasing these big fish you better just be prepared to just you know get freaking soaked and be burning hot and your camera to end up on the bottom of the lake if you want to do this at any level um, but whatever we're gonna tough it out until dark or at least try to uh, and catch a big giant flathead, but it is just pouring cats and dogs out here now and uh, Yeah, at this point that the clothes are just um, Wet, wet. <laughs> But it is what it is Go
Okay, well, the rain has finally subsided temporarily, and we have just gotten poured on for forever. And this is a cut chunk I threw out 10 seconds ago, just as far as I could get it out into the side channel, and it, it got creamed. Started peeling line the rod holder. This is a catfish. Look at the head shakes. Oh, baby. Man, we worked for this guy. I just about fell. You did? <laughs> yeah, I, it's slippery. Oh man, we're just soaking wet. We didn't bring rain gear. Yeah, you can see how sopping wet you are. Yeah, we got rained on bad. For hours. For like two hours. <laughs> yeah, it's still raining too. Great chief. Got him though. Oh buddy, I have got me a fish. I'm so happy. <laughs> After losing my camera. Got a fish. Fish on, baby. Fish on. Okay. That was a fresh piece of cut bait too. I just had I literally just cut it, put it out. Oh, it's a good one, I think. I hope it's a big flathead. That would be so cool. He's kind of getting a little swirly. Oh, there's some line. There's some line. There's some line. Oh, we got some drag. We got some drag. He's running up here now. Oh, he's pulling. He's pulling. That's a strong fish. That's a strong fish. The way it hit it first and took drag out of the rod holder, I thought it was a striper. This is the telltale sign of a big catfish. It just staying down like this. Oh, baby. There's some more line to come around but boy he'll start the day off nice good platy Let's see if you can hold this rod for me I'll try to land him oh. looks like he's hooked pretty good too oh come here buddy oh yeah that's what we wanted oh buddy Sweet, got me a flatty. I love these guys, man, that was worth the wait. And all the suck. And boy, was it a lot of suck. But we got them. That's why you keep persevering. Oh baby, right after that front moved out. Nice flatty. Okay. Oh. Oh, baby, Ryan's on now. Is he coming at you? Is he on? Yeah, it's a little dink, I think. It looked like he was, like, eating it and coming at you. Well. There, that was a little bit of weight right there. No, wait a minute. I don't know, dude. What is this? What's going on He's here? swimming totally crap. Is that drag? Was that drag? No, it heard, yeah. I don't understand. It's that coming, rod's getting hit too. It's coming at us. Holy. Is he in the anchor rope? No, it's just a little dinky blue. Little dink blue. Maybe about 10 pounds. Shh. Maybe about five. Lip hooked. Maybe that's what's dinking us to death. 
You can just grab that leader line and flip them in. That's a hundred pound test. Uh, there you go. Well, maybe six, seven pounds. Not bad. Not bad. The fish and the rain and the cold. Yes, good. Good. Catch the fish. This one is getting dinked on too. There is another one. Get him unhooked. You can pick him up and release him. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do it in a second. You want a slow motion? Nah. You can just nail an osprey. Oh. Pretty it, little blue. If my hands are shaking, it causes cold <laughs> and pouring rain still. Blue. He grunting. Dump him back into water. See ya. My turn to catch 50. <laughs> I literally just got broken off on some kind of submerged structure. And I threw this one back out, like, immediately. And, like, I was just messing with something, and Brian's like, Hey, there's a fish! Literally two seconds after this thing's in the water. Three. And it's just sitting there bobbing. So weird. What the As you can see, it's still raining. Yes. It's still <laughs> straight up pouring. This may be a decent fish, guys. Yeah. That's a lot of drag going. That's a drag. That's a good amount of line. Wow. More line. This is taking yeah. Time. Golly. I'm gonna reposition here. Out of the blue. Whoa. Whoa, he's tearing line. This is a big giant headpiece too. Pulling the whole back end of the boat around. Whoa. I must have just thrown this right on this thing's head. You must have. Well, that's a good one. Yeah. It's just staying down. I ain't making any line on them. You're not even pulling drag in, dude. I know. I don't have it crazy tight. But it ain't crazy loose either. Oh, more line. Woo! Another big flat head. Another big flatty. Nice. Oh, buddy. Oh. No, no, no. I go up there. Oh, you think you can do that, and? Cameraman and that man all in one. <laughs> if you can get it out, I can probably get them. Okay, here, I got them. There we go. <laughs> We've been just sitting here getting poured on for like four hours. But we got another big old flathead. I literally just had gotten broken off by something over there, too. Incredible. Incredible. Let's get him in the boat. Yeah, I'm skin like skin hooked down halfway down his throat. It's just biting the crap out of me. Look at 
that fish, baby. Woo. Right, I gotta sit down for a second. Well, we got us another nice flathead, braving and finding the elements, let me tell you. Ryan and I are just freezing out here in shorts and t-shirts. <laughs> And these horrible rain jackets we have but we have a big flathead so there we go oh what a pretty fish flatheads well it has finally for the moment stopped raining <laughs> and we are frozen to the bone yep wet cold wind is blowing caught some big flatheads though the there's there's the sunset so that's nice but we're not getting any of it the, the no, wind just picked up that's just cutting us to our core. That was totally a picture-perfect day and foreshadowing from the intro where I said a bunch of dumb stuff was going to happen because it happens every time Ryan and I go fishing. We've been fishing buddies for like seven years now and every time we go fishing something crazy happens last time he was in town for medical school i caught a muskie on a skipjack fly he caught close to a 40 pound striper on a uh what was it a trout reel and rod with 10 pound test and we had a big giant double with catfish too the next day after that that got tangled in the anchor rope and we managed to get both of them out so ryan and i fishing equals something dumb happening some crazy cool catches and all around a good time. And, you know, that's what I like to put out on this channel. I show everything that happens generally, unless there's cuss words. I just edit that out because that's not good for TV. Um, but good, bad, the ugly, I'm going to put it on here. This is a classic tale of persevering and pushing through the obstacles. And I'll be honest, I was crazy frustrated after losing my camera. That was like 400 something bucks. Uh, with the SD card, the battery stick, everything. It was just gone. And then literally 10 minutes after that, my Makota Trova remote fries itself out, and that's a new, another 200 bucks. So fishing ain't cheap. Fishing ain't easy. It's frustrating. The term boat bust out another thousand literally was almost applicable on this day. But, you know, I had a great time, and I just know that that's a part of it. I've had this stuff happen in the past, and you just can't let it get to you because, frankly, there's nothing you can do to change it. There's nothing that I can do to bring the camera up from the bottom of the dam. But, you know, I can make a constant choice to just push forward and try to catch some big fish and continue making those memories and teaching you guys a little something that I've learned along the way. So thanks for coming along with us on this fishing adventure. We'll catch you on the next one.